Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at another Standard 2022 deck, preparing for the upcoming rotation. And as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, today we're building a deck around a gelatinous cube, a 4 mana for 3 ooze from Forgotten Realms, and when it enters the battlefield we can exile target a non-ooze creature an opponent controls until gelatinous cube leaves the battlefield, and we can also dissolve whatever we exiled with a cube by paying X and a black, in which case we put a target creature card with mana value X that we exiled with a cube into its owner's graveyard, so even if the cube gets answered the opponent won't get their creature back, and then to synergize with our cube, we also have the full playset of Teleportation Circle, the 4-man enchantment that at the beginning of our end step, we can exile one of our artifacts or creatures and then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control, so we can essentially flicker one of our artifacts or creatures to re-enable any entered battlefield abilities, which is great with cards like Gelatinous Cube. And then the cherry on top in this deck are the four copies of Kaya, the inexorable. The five mana planeswalker starts out at five loyalty, and then the plus one ability puts a ghost form counter on up to one target non-token creature, and then when that creature dies or is put into exile, we return it into its owner's hands and create a 1-1 one -one white spirit creature token with flying. So if we put a ghost form counter on one of our creatures and subsequently flicker it with teleportation circle, not only do we get to potentially re-trigger any enter the battlefield abilities, but we also get to generate a 1-1 spirit token in the process. And then eventually we can also use the minus 3 on Kaya to exile target no land permanent, and the minus 7 which lets us replay Kaya over and over again out of our graveyard. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana, we've got a full playset of Shambling Ghast to once again combine with the Deadly Dispute, so we can sacrifice a Ghast, make a treasure, or give a creature minus 1 minus 1, and then make an additional treasure with Dispute and draw 2 cards. And there are some other creatures that we don't mind sacrificing in this deck, including the Spirit Tokens that Kaya leaves behind. Then we also have a few creatures that make the opponent discard when they enter the battlefield, with our two copies of Elderfang Disciple and the full playset of Acquisitions Expert, which takes a look at how many creatures are in our party, and then the opponent has revealed that many cards, we get to choose one of them, and the opponent has to discard that card. And then we've got a few clerics alongside our Acquisitions Expert, which is a rogue, so we usually get to look at two cards from the opponent's hand, and then choose one of them. And of course these are all great to flicker with our teleportation circle if the opponent still has cards in hand, and that's also the reason why we're not playing with Elite Spellbinder, because we would rather make the opponent just discard all their cards instead of putting them in exile. Then at 3 mana we also have two copies of Moonblast Cleric, a 3-2 that when it enters a battlefield lets us search our library for an enchantment card, reveal it and then put it on top of our deck. So this can help us find the Teleportation Circle and potentially multiple copies of Teleportation Circle so we can start flickering a lot of different creatures. Then we also have two copies of Demon's Disciple, a 3-1 that when it enters a battlefield forces each player to sacrifice a creature or planeswalker. So this is great if we have some creatures we don't mind sacrificing, especially nice once we get the Teleportation Circle and Kaya engine going, as we can simply sacrifice a spirit token that the Disciple leaves behind. And then we also have two copies of Skullport Merchant, a 1 for it that makes a treasure when it enters the battlefield, and for one on a black we can sacrifice another creature or treasure to draw a card. And then at 4 mana we've got our cube, circle, and full playset of Kaya. And then rounding out the deck we also have the full playset of Vanishing Verse as a versatile removal spell for 2 mana that can exile target a monocolored permanent. And the mana base includes the full playset of the Black-White Pathway, only 2 Snarls since those often come into play tapped in later turns. Then we've got 10 basic swamps, 4 basic planes, and then 2 of each creature land with Cave of the Frost Dragon which can turn into a 3-4 flyer and Hive of the Eye Tyrant, which can turn into a 3-3 creature with Menace, that exiles a card from the opponent's graveyard. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, with a hand that could use an extra land or two, but we can sack Expert to Dispute, so I'll try it. Put in blue-whites. Points towards control. So not going to be the best matchup for Gelatinous Cube. But should be a fine matchup for Expert and Kaya. A 
all hit for one. And then I could main phase dispute. I'll just pass and do it end of turn. Opponent is considering countering this. Lots of resolve. Liking disciple plus expert here. Attack the opponent's hand. And wait for a better window to resolve Kaya. Three mana counter, but they don't have double blue and a behold. I'll take the behold. All right, so get in for two. How about another experts? The card in exile could be saw it coming, so that's why we don't want to play Kaya yet. And yeah, there it is. And then the two toughness here probably doesn't matter a whole lot. I guess it could matter against Alrun's Epiphany tokens. But I'm considering main phasing this dispute. Although I could also end of turn it. Still some cards we could draw into and then still play. Because if we draw another Expert, I want to have a Cleric in place, a Reasoning. But I guess we'll still go for a Disciple. Have other Clerics in the deck too. And then I guess we'll play the Planes, even though... Now we're showing the opponent that we're Black-White. Strict Proctor, that's fine. They'll stop my Gelatinous Cube. But we can still play Kaya. So resolve Kaya. Plus on the expert maybe. I just wanna get in, get out. Maybe I want to exile the Proctor while I still can. Could also do it with Kaya. And we'll do it like this. Vanishing Verse could be an answer for the cave as well, but we'll be able to make uh, spirit tokens with Teleportation Circle plus Kaya, hopefully. And Proctor does make our ETB effects a little bit more difficult to manage, so we'll exile that while we can. Bounding Golds answers Kaya. So, time for Circle. Can always draw another vanishing verse to exile the bound in gold. Uh -huh, Starnheim unleashed, making two angels, but gelatinous cube is a perfect answer here. Exile one of them. And then we can flicker the cube. Thanks, all another. Alright, got a lot of good top decks. Doomscar gonna wipe the board, if that happens. And we'll get in there with the dragon, I think. Might be worthwhile to play the cube, sacking the treasure, just to get an additional creature in play. Downside is if I draw another deadly dispute, I guess there's only two left. I don't have a treasure to sacrifice. And then I guess we can flicker the cave. 
Although it still comes back tapped. Bounding gold in my cave. Yeah, I guess that stops it from becoming a creature. Can still hit for four. And now the opponent could potentially trade their dragon for mine. Although, I guess not with her land coming into play tapped, not her circle. Alright, so I'm hitting for three, and then next turn the opponent can actually block profitably with their dragon. So we're not out of the woods yet, but as soon as we find another ETB effect, we'll have plenty of value with double circle. So, the merchant, for instance, making treasure would be great. So don't want to attack with cube anymore, since the 3-4 will eat us alive with the shield in play. So, now yeah, we'll just play our land and pass. Behold, the multiverse is kind of the perfect card for them here. They kind of have to keep up mana constantly to animate their creature lanes, or they have to answer the cube. And uh, yeah, any non-land card here is probably pretty strong. Opponent taps out for Planeswalker, so we can hit him for three. And Expert can have a look and empty their hand. I can pay the one. Another Bounding Gold. I think we go face and ignore her. Their planeswalker here. Last card was another Stronheim unleashed. So now Gelatinous Cube is lethal by itself. Opponent can animate their giant's land. So I don't have any good attacks. Maybe I should be holding the gas since it doesn't deal damage with shield in play. And maybe we top deck uh, merchants and then we need more sacrifice fodder. Opponent holding a counter spell. Leave me be, I'm reading. Yeah, next turn they can potentially ultimate. Which uh, is gonna be problematic. So I need to top deck something. Divide by zero bounces cube. Introduction to Annihilation, that's fine. Opponent for Talza cards, Hive of the Eye Tyrants, a little bit late to the party. Shield means we don't deal any damage. Including their Planeswalker here. Cube gets countered, that's fine. Well, 
Well, we do have a lethal hive, at least. And that one's not so easy to deal with. But our opponent does get to draw their library if they want. Minus 10. Exchange hand and library. Opponent's just going to minus 2 instead. Otherwise, of course, they would just risk dying from drawing from an empty library. Another cube, okay. So if I have mana for cube and hive, we could have lethal here. Pay the one. And turn on hive. Which has menace. So better than the uh, Dragonland would be. Don't think it matters what we exile here. Opponent can only animate one creature land. They can block Hive. And our opponent explodes. Hoof, this was a nail biter. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Gassed into dispute. Can set up some powerful starts to run forest from our opponents. So it looks like a mono green deck. Hit for one, and then we can dispute end of turn. Troll. Could target for the vanishing verse as well. So if they don't get to. Gain the enchantments. No land. I might have to dispute to draw two to hit my land drop. Alright, and then... What's the play here? Probably still Vanishing Verse. Next turn we can play Kaya. Toski. Also something we want to exile, or we can kill it with a Demon's Disciple. So I could, for instance, go... Skullport Merchant into Demon's Disciple, Sack Merchant. Although just playing Kaya minusing on Toski is also pretty decent, because then we get to untap with an active Kaya. Seems more mana efficient than Disciple. And then Clary can get Teleportation Circle to synergize with Kaya. Okay, so we've got a lot of options. I'm kind of liking just Cleric plus Vanishing Verse for now. Gotta watch out for Snakeskin Veil on the troll. So that would have been a reason to Demon's Disciple, but then they get the enchantments. Aha, uh -huh, Inscription. Well, I probably messed up by not playing my land first. Could have exiled that in response. That's fine. At least now they're tapped out. They might not have gone for the Inscription had we uh, kept up two mana. Alright, so... Good Circle coming up. So next turn, we can maybe set up with Disciple and Merchants. Opponent has to discard. Epic Proportions, kind of unexpected. And then I think I plus on Disciple, which I'm potentially going to flicker next turn with Circle. Colossal Majesty. Okay, so time for circle. And then I can even attack. 
play my dispute on the disciple, make the opponent discard, make a spirit, and then maybe plus on the merchant, flicker that with circle, make another 1-1 one, one flyer, and take over from there. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn one aghast. Put on blue-green, maybe a ramp deck. Hoping for a nice target for a Vanishing Verse. Just play a tapped cave. So I've got a pretty slow start. Put in foretells another card. Disputes nice. Do I just play cube without a target to get a body in play? think so. I could sag the ghast with dispute if that runs into a counter spell. That's kind of annoying. If the cube gets countered, so be it. All right, desert doom. I cannot quite exile with verse right now. I can wait until it attacks. I can sack gas to disputes. And then still have double verse available in case they counter the first one. I don't really want a dragon hitting me. I expect they have one counter spell at least, so I think I pass and then hope the dragon attacks so we can exile it. Blizzard Brawl. Hmm, that's annoying. Do I dispute a cube now? I don't think I do. Really want a dragon to attack. And then the first one probably gets countered, and then the second one hopefully resolves. Alright, that works. Now we get to untap and resolve Kaya. And we even have the expert circle combo, so now I'm kind of liking expert plus circle instead. Could still go for Kaya in case of a counter spell. This is a close call. If there's an Elrond's Epiphany, what then? If they have a counter in exile, getting Kai on play might be more important than circle. And then dispute with experts also kind of nice. Frog Hemoth. Wasn't expecting that one. Just goes face. I'll take it. Can always minus with Kaya. Or a cube can answer it. Okay, so... How about I attack for one, dispute the experts. See what we draw and then maybe play cube.
get the opponent's last card. I guess both my lands come into play tapped at the moment. Hmm. Alright, then I might have to minus Kai on the Frog Hemoth instead. So I can prioritize playing the Expert to get the opponent's last card. And play Tapped Hive. Land number six, there's Epiphany. So if they have double Epiphany, they can maybe take out Kaya here. And yeah, double Epiphany this. Alright, we lose Kaya, but we still have Circle plus Cube. Pugilist is fine. So I think I go for the birds first. Or at least one bird. Because we need to flicker the cube here. And then I can maybe go for Pugilist and then uh, dissolve it next turn. Because one more land means Pugilist turns into an 8-8. Which we don't want. Will dissolve. And then rather than playing Disciple, I like attacking. Flicker Cube, Axel Bird. Cultivator's fine. Just more food for the cube. So how about... Activate Hive. This can hit for three. Then I can eat the Cultivator and dissolve it right away. Can dissolve at any point. Right, Epiphany is fine. One Epiphany left in the deck. Another Cultivator, fair enough. So if I Dissolve, then... Let's see, how much mana do we have? If I draw an untapped land, I would have enough to animate both my creature lands and attack with them. Which would give me a lethal if I don't Dissolve and use the treasure here. So that might be worth it, an untapped land over the top for the win. Another cube's not bad. Alright, so we'll exile Cultivator now. And then we'll dissolve one of them. I guess we had lethal here with... Uh, the Hive of the Eye Tyrant instead of uh, just dissolving. That probably would have been better. We'll give the opponent one more turn to draw out of it. They don't. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand, sort of. Uh, we're not doing anything until turn 3, which is Disciple. Still need double black for cube. 
I mean, we could draw a cheap creature to Sanctum the Dispute, and then our hand's pretty good. And we do have a lot of swamps in the deck we can draw for a cube, and then Circle plus Cube is pretty strong too. Alright, perfect. Put into red green. Florahedron. Okay. Don't have double black, so can't play Ghast and Dispute. So the options are play Disciple, make them sack Florahedron, I can sack Expert. Or I can dispute, sacking the expert, and see what we draw. If we're up against a red-green creature deck, I just want to hit my land drops to get circle cube going. So I think I prioritize hitting my land drops. I'll hang on to my treasure. So yeah, if we can get circle cube Kaya going, it's going to be pretty hard to lose. Skewed Swarm is scary. Alright, I guess it's uh, time for the cube. What's the alternative? Can just Vanishing Verse the Skewed Swarm for now and pass it back. Yeah, having to use my treasure to play cube is not ideal. Could exile the token they made, and then try and flicker the cube next turn. If we draw an untapped land, which can then exile the swarm. Could also just play a disciple to make them discard. Yeah, maybe that's the play, while they still have cards in hand. So I don't waste my treasure. Another Skewed Swarm. Alright, now I might have to verse the original one so we don't fall too far behind on board. They probably still have a land drop to play and make two tokens, so now they only get one. Then probably don't want to trade. Alright, the land is good. So, given that they only have four lands in play, I could circle Disciple, get their last card before playing cube to make sure they don't have removal for cube, like maybe a Frostbite. Although I guess only one snow land in play at the moment. Yeah, that's fair. Right, their last card was Field Trip. And now it's cube time. And then I don't want to flicker anything. Opponent could potentially activate the Slumber Mounds as well. But now we should be able to take control of the game. So let's uh, digest this Cute Swarm. So it doesn't come back. And our opponent packs it in, can start flickering the cube, exile more of the opponent's creatures, and eventually get Kaya going to generate spirits in the process. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Got our guests hoping to find either merchants, the demon's disciple, or the deadly disputes to make use of it. Turn to expert, and then maybe remove something, turn three. Kai is a good one too. 
Let's your opponent blank green. Take a crippling fear. Right, there's our demon's disciple. Although nothing to take out just yet. Could still play it just to sacrifice my gas to make a treasure to maybe play Kaya next turn. Doesn't seem worthwhile. Uh-huh, put on Sultai. That can make things a little bit more difficult. More controlling deck. It's not gonna present many targets for Disciple and Cube. Baleful Mastery on the Shambling Ghast, of all things. Take another Crippling Fear. Do they have the third Crippling Fear? Alright, it's gonna be a Binding. Circle's nice, but uh, can't play it yet. So hoping for a target for Vanishing Verse here. Can't think of too many that they would play here. If they play Desert Doom, we can't exile it, but then Disciple lines up nicely. All right, we'll get in for two. And play another Experts. Takes a Swamp this time. Shadow's Verdict was to be expected. Now we can play Circle. Professor Onyx we can take out, whether it's with Disciple or Vanishing Verse. If I draw lands for Kaya, I probably just want to play Kaya and minus. That way next turn I have the option of maybe plussing on a different creature. There has to be an answer here. Two lands going to the graveyard. Alright, time for Kaya. And then at the very least, Cube Circle Kaya will generate a Spirit Token. Don't really want to play Disciple. Right, Soul Shatter takes out Kaya instead. So as the dust settles, could play Cube on an empty board. It's probably fine. Just to get a bit of pressure going. It's going to get countered. Bone gets teachings. That's going to let them draw two. Well, I guess it's time to start attacking with our creature lands. 
Might as well hive and exile something out of their graveyard. And that's something... There's no creatures or planeswalkers. So it probably doesn't matter too much. This is where the Sultai deck kind of needs to have instant speed removal for our lands. That seemed to resolve pretty smoothly. Although they could of course have creature removal in hand. Discards Bloodchief's Thirst. Also don't hate playing a gelatinous cube here. With a disciple still in hand, we've got removal. Okay, dispute means I can sacrifice my creature land should they try and kill it. And this is technically a lethal attack. Another removal spell takes out my cube. So we're only hitting for one here. And then I could play a Demon's Disciple or a Merchant. Probably fine to play the Merchant, just to have a little bit of added pressure. Even though I could slow play it to draw an extra card in the process. So we've got five damage on the board between our creatures and our cave. You happen on a glade gets back binding. All right, we did exile the other one, so that's definitely still a reason to exile the enchantment. Okay, circle's nice, although it would have been even better with a merchant still. Oh, opponent needs removal for cave, which is going to require a pretty specific answer. Yeah, I think we go for it. Alright, sweet, and that'll do it. So yeah, we managed to face a variety of decks in today's gameplay video all the way from control to creature decks. Our decks definitely best suited against creature decks since we have so many recursive removal spells between our uh, cube with circle and some of the other creatures as well. So it's definitely favored against most creature matchups. Control gets a bit tougher. That's where the creature lands are very important and trying to stick something like Kaya to get repeatable value out of it. But uh, yeah, overall, pretty fun black-white variant of the Teleportation Circle deck, even though it doesn't have the inherent synergy that the green-white version has. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.